In this video, we want to take a look at a very powerful concept. Imagine that you are a server administrator and you have multiple server machines running and uh, let's say you have 10 different server machines running, one for the web server, one for the database, one for the email, and you may want to make some configuration changes for them. What you don't want to do, however, is to get up and go physically to all of these different machines because they might be geographically very far away from you or maybe you're just lazy, right? So uh, a system administrator, a good system administrator is typically very lazy. So what we want to do is we want to somehow connect to these machines from a remote end, right? And the way we're going to do that is by uh, imagining a scenario in which we have some server machines and a client machine. So we are sitting on the client machine and we want to connect to the server machine. So this over here is our scenario. We have a client machine and then on the other hand, we have a server machine. We want to issue some requests on the client machine and then we want this client software to communicate with some software on the server. Now, whatever commands we issue on the client machine are going to be sent to the server machine and this is going to execute it over here. The server is going to execute it over here and whatever response comes out is going to go to the client and is going to be shown on the client's end. Right, so that is the scenario that we want. So we want a client software over here and we want a server software over here. So for the client software, we're going to, because we have this client over here on Windows, we are going to install a Windows software over here, which is called Putty. So it's very easily available if you search for Putty download or you go to www.putty.org. So once you have that, uh, you can go to uh, download here. You click on that and then you arrive at this download page from which you want to download the 64-bit installer or 32-bit installer, whichever operating system you're on. So once you go there, you're going to have this download link over here. You click on that and you install this software, right? So this is a very easy setup. You simply click on next and next, and then next and then finish and it should install automatically on your machine, right? So you do have to agree to the UAC that pops up. So yes, it's very safe. It's a very popular software. It's not going to make any uh, drastic changes to your machine. So we're fine. Uh, and then once it is finished, we are going to start it. Go to the start menu and search for Putty. It should come up and you can start it by clicking on the Putty command, right? On the other end, we need a server. So for the server, we're going to go to our Linux virtual machine and we are going to issue the command sudo apt install open ssh dash server. So ssh is short for secure shell. That is what enables the request and response to be communicated securely between the server and client, right? And the open SSH server is the server that enables SSH uh, in an open source software, right? So this is the uh, most popular SSH server on Linux. So we install that, enter our password, and it should install fairly quickly. So once that is done, we can issue the command netstat ntlp and grep for port 22. So SSH, open SSH runs on port 22 by default. So we can see that it is now running and we're good to connect to it from our client. Let's go ahead and figure out what our IP address is using if config. So if we hit enter, we will see that our address is at 10.0.2.15. Now there is a problem with the way VirtualBox sets up our networking that we would not be able to connect to this IP address from outside that is from Windows. So what we want to do instead is change the settings very slightly so that we can connect to this virtual machine from outside. Now you would not have to do this if you were running on a physical machine. On a physical machine you would have this IP and you would simply be able to go ahead and connect to it using Putty. But because we are running in a virtual machine it is going to require a little bit of configuration or on our end. So in uh, the next couple of minutes, we're going to do that configuration real quick and then we'll come back to our topic at hand that is connecting to this environment. So let's go over here at the bottom in the uh, virtual machine bar, right click on this and click on network settings. So right click on the network adapter button and go to settings. Then in the adapter, you change the attach to to host only adapter and click on okay. Right, so this is going to uh, make some changes to the networking and then we can uh, enter if config again. Go to the connections button on the status bar and click on disconnect. Then click it again and click on wired connection one. Right, so that should essentially restart your networking. So 
all we want to do is we want to restart the networking and then if we do if config you will see that our IP address has changed to something uh, more familiar such as 192.168.56.101 so there you go 192.168.56.101 and now we can start putty again and we're back on track and we enter this address 192.168.56.101 and then hit open and we get a warning over here that allows us to verify the integrity of the connection so you don't have to worry about this just click on yes and you get a login prompt so login as the username of the linux machine so that is going to be nam in my case so i'm going to enter nam and uh, my password for the linux machine right so that's entered and now i am in a prompt that is going to allow me to execute commands as if i was in the machines terminal itself right so this is a secure shell and let's go ahead and take a look at this so ps aux grep tail no tail command is over here this one that i can see is the grep so in my putty terminal i say tail minus f and any file name so dot bash rc so this tail is running and if i go to the terminal again and i say ps aux grep tail now you can see that this is indeed running over here right so this file is indeed running over here even though i am in putty so I hit control C to exit this and then let's go ahead and create a file in my home directory. So touch testfile.txt and uh, as you can see if I go to my home directory over here there is no such file at the moment. If I hit enter now this file has been created in my home directory. So I am indeed working in the uh, Ubuntu environment over here. So now if I can open this file and modify it using my VI editor. So I modify it, I write quit. and now if I go over here and I open my file, you will notice that the contents really have changed. So that gives you the power to modify, see changed. So that gives you the power to modify files, make configurations, run processes in your remote environment. And now you don't even have to have this virtual machine open, right? So obviously it has to be running, but you can uh, minimize the GUI and simply go ahead and execute commands over here. So for instance, if I say echo something, any command that we've seen really up until this point can go in this terminal, right? So that is the real power of command line. Now you can execute commands on a remote machine in a very highly flexible environment. This is going to give you all the power that you have without having to rely on a GUI, which is going to be extremely slow over the uh, over the internet for example now we have a very powerful command line and you can use all your skills to execute server side commands without having to worry about speed in the next video we're going to take a look at something even more powerful Just simply hit exit and you're done oh and if you're on linux or mac all you have to do is open up a terminal issue the command ssh and then the ip address you don't need putty on linux or mac because ssh comes built in with Linux and Mac and you can simply enter the command SSH and then the IP address and you should be able to connect to the remote machine very easily. So in the previous video, we connected to our virtual machine using PuTTY, right? So let's go ahead and do that again, 192.168.56.101. So that's our IP address over here, retrieved through if config, and let's go ahead and connect this, connect to this using PuTTY. Right, so we are going to give it uh, our username and our password. Let's go ahead and go to settings and just increase the in the appearance panel. Let's go ahead and change the font size to a little bit larger so that you can see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and change this to 18 and click on OK and apply right so that's better so now what we want to do is we want to take a look at a very important use case and the idea is that when you are connected to a server you are connected over a network and it's very likely that the connection is going to drop and once the connection drops anything that you did any process that you started any program that you executed in the remote machine is going to exit with you so let's demonstrate how that is going to happen so so let's Take a look at this right so there is no process for tail right so this one line that we get as output over here is simply this grep so let's go over here and say tail minus f uh, dot bash rc so we have this tail running over here so this is a follow tail with dash f switch 
so that means that our tail is going to keep running so if you go over here and say ps aux grab tail you will notice that this tail is running over here right so it's going to keep executing until i exit it over here right so if i control c this and go back over here you will see that it is now finished right so let's go ahead and do this again now now this is still running if i go ahead and exit this terminal right so i'm going to close putty now without stopping this process so what i want to do is i want to make sure that this tail keeps running i'll give you an example of why we might need this in a little while so let's go ahead and close this okay and then do ps aux grep tail again right so you will notice that our tail is now gone right so the process that was over here has automatically exited now we don't want that why imagine that you are running a machine learning experiment for instance that's uh, what i do on a daily basis so you go to a server which is a very high end server and you want to run your machine learning experiments over there so you start the experiment it's going to take approximately like 15 hours right and you don't want to keep yourself connected to the server in all that time one because you have other things to do and two because your network might drop you might close your uh, laptop you might get disconnected from the internet there might be a lot of things that might go wrong that will drop the connection in between so if the connection is dropped your 15 hour experiment is going to be interrupted in the middle and you don't want that what you want to do is you want to start a process and you want to ensure that it keeps running even if you exit your putty terminal right or even if you exit your SSH terminal your client gets disconnected but the process should keep running right so we're going to see how we can do that so let's go ahead and start our putty again let's enter our IP address so 192.168.56.101 so the same address let's click on open let's log in and now let's go ahead and issue the same command so we're going to say tail minus f dot bash rc right so uh, we're imagining that this is some process that we want to enable to continue execution even after i exit right so at the moment it's not going to do that so the command that we have for that is let's go ahead and clear this the command is no hub right so no hub means that do not send the hang up signal to child processes when i exit right so that's what it means uh, no hang up signal right so no hub and then i type the same command tail minus f and then i say dot bash dot bash rc and this is going to start this process and it's going to ensure that when my terminal exits it is not going to exit the whole tail command as well right so even if i disconnect tail is going to continue running however if i do it like this i'm not going to get the prompt back right so this is not going to give me the prompt back right uh, what i instead want to do is i want to stop this See, I'm not getting the prompt back. So I'm going to stop this using control C and I'm going to issue the same command. So up arrow key and I'm going to put an ampersand over here. So this ampersand is different from no hub. These are two different concepts. Let's take a look at ampersand first. So ampersand means that I don't want this process to take up my terminal over here. Start this process, send it to the background and let it just stay in the background. Let me do something else, right? So we'll see how that affects us in a minute. This no hub means that when I exit, do not exit tail, right? So even if my terminal exits, even if I log out, even if I get disconnected, do not send a hang up signal to tail. So do not kill tail, right? So both of these combi combined mean that start the process right now in the background. So that ampersand is for background. Start it in background, give me my terminal back. And even if I exit, do not kill this tail process, right? So let's go over here and let's clear this and say ps ps aux grab tail and you will see that there is no other tail over here let's go ahead and execute this so it says no hub ignoring input and appending output to no hub dot out so if you go over here and execute this again now you will see that this tail is now running right so we can either exit this over here or we can simply go ahead and close this right but before we do that you can say that we have uh, let's say unless we have this command this file no hub dot out over here so if we cat this you will notice that all the outputs of the tail this tail this tail command over here so all the outputs of this tail command over here are being redirected to this file the reason is that sometimes you're interested well most of the times you're interested in seeing what output that file produced that you started in the background 
and that uh, all that output is not going to go to waste it's going to be put in this nohub.out file so that later when you do log in you can see what output was produced as a result of this file right but we're not interested in that at the moment so let's imagine that we got disconnected so close putty it says you're going to lose data and stuff we don't care okay so that's gone but you will notice that our prompt over here is still running right so it's still running we're still fine so let's say this is running and after a day we come back and we log in again so 192.168.56.101 so we log in again nam and my password so i go in and now i say ps ox crap tail so this guy is running over here and well i've had enough of it so let's go ahead and close this file now how do we do that uh, it would either have ended by now so let's say our 15 hour experiment uh, was completed and it finished so it would have exited this and this would no longer be here but if it's still running and i want to stop it forcefully i can stop it just as we stopped a process earlier on in one of the earlier videos so we can say kill minus nine and then the process id over here so we go ahead and say the process id and now it's gone right so here we have taken a look at a very powerful concept you start a process on a server machine and it's going to continue to execute even if you disconnect or even if you log out and that is extremely powerful that is something that server admins have to do repeatedly uh, again and again so you start a web server you wanted to continue running you start an experiment you wanted to continue running you start some conversion of files you want some recording whatever you want to do on this uh, remote machine you typically want it to continue even if you get disconnected or if you log out so that is a tool that you should always have under your belt so no hub and at the end ampersand that's essentially the whole thing no hub uh, right so some command over here and then at the end ampersand that's the whole syntax that you need to remember right so everything else whatever you want to put in the middle over here uh, whatever command you want to put in the middle over here works fine